Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations to all of you on International Women's Day. Um, I'm not like Ayan Hershey Ali. I don't have any parliamentary elections to go back to, but uh, I do have a little baby boy that I'm feeding, so I will have to leave after this speech. Uh, I hope you can forgive me, uh, but I will get all the um, uh, lowdown on what happened afterwards from my colleagues. On International Women's Day, March 8th, we are here to commemorate Hatun. Sweet 23-year-old Hatun, murdered in cold blood by her brothers for dishonoring her family, for divorcing a man she was forced to marry at the age of 16, for unveiling, for dating German men. Some boys discussing her death put it clearly she deserved to die. The whore lived like a German. To her brothers, to Islamists, to the political Islamic movement, that is all that she was. And that is all that Maryam Ayubi was, stoned to death in the Islamic Republic of Iran for sex outside of marriage. And that is all that sweet 16-year-old Atef Rajabi was, by the Islamic Republic of Iran, hung in a city square for acts incompatible with chastity. Sometimes, sometimes it takes a Hatun, a Maryam, an Atefe to outrage us and move us into action. I suppose it is easier to understand one woman than millions. Her refusal, her resistance, and the barbarity of the Islamic justice that was meted out against her. But also Hatun and others like her personify, they symbolize the status of women, the subhuman status of women in Islam-ridden societies or Islamist communities from Iran to Iraq and Afghanistan to Germany and Britain. Hatun's death outrages us not because her murder is a rare tragedy, but because it is so common. There are millions like her, living under sexual apartheid, veiled, gagged, bound, burnt, hacked to death, hung, stoned, axed. Millions who are refusing and resisting and demanding a life worthy of 21st century humanity. To live a life of one's own choosing. How simple these words sound. How simple they should be, yet how difficult it has become to do so in this day and age. Difficult in a new world order where universal values and standards that were taken for granted after having been fought for for centuries are under attack. All we hear over and over again as if a sermon over the innumerable corpses of women is, well, this is their culture, it's their religion. Respect it. Tolerate it. Don't offend it. Cultural rel relativism has made all beliefs equal, no matter how misogynist. And nowadays, religions and beliefs seem to have more rights and demand more respect, more tolerance, more equality than humans themselves. And if you cry out, if you say enough, if you say political Islam is a reactionary right-wing movement that has to be pushed back, if you demand universal rights, if you demand secularism, you are deemed a racist and an Islamophobe. This is not the case. Of course, we must respect humanity and human beings, but not all beliefs are worthy of respect. Also, criticizing a belief, the political movement that's associated with it, has nothing to do with racism. It has everything to do, though, with being the immediate necessity of our times. How many more Hatuns? How many more Maryam Ayubis? How many more Atef Rajabis before it is stopped? How can it be stopped? Definitely not by respecting it, not by tolerating it. Imagine tolerating and respecting fascism and Nazism. Would that have gotten rid of it? Not by promoting separate rights and different standards for different people, whether they live in Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, or here in Germany and Britain or Europe definitely by promoting universal standards for all, universal rights for all. They were fought by progressive humanity, by the left, by the women's movement, by, by socialists. They belong to everybody. 
and definitely not by chipping away at secularism, which is in fact a basic minimum now, and not by giving religion more and more access and power to the social sphere. Even it seems we need to call for dereligionization now, and that has become an urgency. How then, how then can we stop it? By confronting it full force. Reaction throughout history has never been pushed back by appeasing it, by excusing it, by tolerating it, by respecting it. It has been pushed back by looking it straight in the eye and standing up to it full force. We have to confront political Islam full force, uncompromisingly, shamelessly, with no ifs and buts. Enough is really enough. Thank you.